you everyone for joining this interesting session about how Indonesia is thinking of emerging out of the crisis that has really devastated the entire travel industry. Let me introduce you to one of the men who has been in the foremost, foremost in this journey. Herman Rukmanadi is a specialist in Java, Yogyakarta, Bali, and Sumatra tourism, as well as other destinations across Indonesia. He is the owner and director of Para Tours, a pioneering travel tour company in West Java. In his leadership role, he promotes West Java tourism globally, focusing on collective growth. He has been developing Para Tours as a B two B DMC for Indonesia for almost thirty four years now creating exclusive trips for corporates, global tour operators, global DMC, mice, and large groups. Bara Tours has served clients from over 10 plus countries and hosted over 2,500 large trips and served over 100 mice and corporate groups. Now, given this big, given the way that they've handled tourism and it's such a scale, it's been a real challenge the last two years. We will be talking to him about how he and his colleagues are brainstorming to get out of this crisis and emerge in an overcompetitive world where they have to start again from the from the scratch. So welcome, and let's start by playing presentation. Uh, please bear with us. It's a slightly long presentation of ten minutes that will introduce Herman Sir by himself to you. Please, um, Ashwini, can you go ahead with the um, with the promo? This region, West Java, was created when the God is smiling. Because you can see how beautiful we are. Climate is very good. Everybody likes it. Most important, the people. Our people are so nice, so friendly. They always have a time for you. If you smile to them, they will smile back. If you wave your hand, they will wave your hand back. I like to introduce myself. I'm Herman Rukmanadi. I'm living here in Bandung as a West Java capital. To talk and to speak and to get in touch with all the foreigners. So I was starting as a street guide in here in Bandung, try to convince them that they have to see something in Bandung. I would believe that the tourists normally they like to see a culture. They like to see how is that the people leave? So I always take them, try to convince them that you should go to the village where all the Sundan is coming. They really, really like it. From that, I get to know about several of the tourism. I think it's the really big number of the Dutch tourists coming over here. So I didn't realize that I met some of them are working for that tour operator. And then without my realize, they report that if you have a problem, if you need something, if it, they are in Bandu, please contact Herman. He's always staying in the bar in the corner and he will help you. I think one year later, this owner called me. Herman, can you help me? Can you uh, rent out the bus only from Jakarta to Bandung? And I did it very with my heart. He started giving business really for me. And I'm handling this company until they close. I'm now managing director of my own company, uh, Bara Tours and Travel, which is, I have been managing this company for only 32 years. And beside that, I'm also doing as a board of the West Java Tourism. I really like to promote this West Java as a tourism destination. I really like to emphasize that all tourists, which is I'm handling, they have to visit West Java. This is my really point. We have a mountain. We have a sea, we have jungle, we have uh, culture, we have people, we have everything.
People live in US Java. We were born as this smiling people. See the volcano, because they're very unique. There's two volcanoes, one in the south, which is the white crater, which is unbelievable white, very beautiful one. The other volcano in the north. But to this one, you only have to drive to the top and you walk a few minutes and you are there in the deep of the active volcano. So and then you really touch, magic, really magic. And afterward, of course, all volcano they have hot spring. And either that from hot spring, you can really soak yourself. I believe that it's very good for your skin, very healthy because uh, contain a lot of ferrum, mineral, everything. Once you are soaking in that pool, beside you getting healthy, you will be five years younger. <laughs> so if you do it three times, you will get 10 years younger. If you are talking about cultures, it's always related with the food. Sundan is food. This is, I, I may say, this is delicious. It's very fresh and very healthy. Fish, oh, fish, you can really, you can find a fish. Even chicken is always fresh food. Actually, Bandung is the one of the best for the culinary adventure. And the creative in here in West Java, you can see that related with bamboo. Even if you go to the village, most of the houses also always use bamboo and found that bamboo can give you very, very nice song. With this bamboo instrument, in fact, that you can play any kind of song. You name it, what do you want? Then we can provide. Since the adventure like rafting, trekking, mountaineering, we do it. Culture, of course, people, the leisure, and of course, the nightlife also very, here is you can find, shopping. This is really like one stop uh, tourism.
Thank you very, very much, um, sir. Thank you very, very much, Budi. Thank you to all of the members of the Java Tourism Board. Um, now is a difficult time for our industry. So um, first I'd like to understand how COVID has impacted you. How has it impacted the entire travel industry? Please let me know, Mr. Herman. Um, well, thank you for the time. And then let me again introduce myself. I'm Herman Rukmanadi, here uh, based in Bandung in West Africa. Okay. <clears throat> of course, COVID has impacted a lot, a lot of things. Nearly all kind of industry has been impacted. Myself and my company itself, since April 2020, 2020, we really had no business at all, which is you know, nobody come anymore. Covid case in the time so huge. Well, I understand that some of a company they have to close, or most of them also they have to lay off all the uh, uh, staff. Yeah, which is I understand because the problem there is no client, there is no income. The same like to my company. Also, without income now is already two years. But one thing, as I mentioned in my first presentation, I do this tourism with my heart. So for me, even though this is very difficult time, but I love tourism. I really do it with my heart. So I have to survive of this COVID. So, you know, you have to understand that if one company close, even for instance, they have only 10 employees, we have to think that the people who has to be fed, not 10, but maybe three, means the wife. In this case, that's why I convince myself, they have to go on. I have to keep all my employees in on my own risk. So that's why until today, I will still stand up. So that's probably my answer for you. Thank you. Sonia, you're on mute, Sonia. Um. I know that is a big challenge, especially when there's no recurring income to be able mm -hmm. to operate. And at the scale that I know you operate with the buses, the tours, the different destinations you operate in, the guides in the different destinations, mm -hmm. man company, you're much bigger. So to survive and to get help all your people to survive is commendable indeed. So now that you know that tourism is opening, what is it? that you are planning to shift. One, on, on, a, on a personal level, your, your work initially sparked rural and fa farm tourism, community tourism and village tourism. Now with this challenge, these people have also been hurt. So tell us how you are supporting them and how you plan to help them recover. Well, um, you see, as I mentioned to you that I love the tourism, and I also mentioned in my presentation that most of the tourists actually, they really like to see the culture, the people who live in their own houses, their own villages. That's why most of my tours, uh, I always try to put them in itinerary that they have to visit one of the villages. Why? Because, you know, this is the thing what I try to help all the people. If we bring the tourists to one village, okay? So what they will get, of course, the experience to know, to get to know with the tourists, then I always try and help them to involve the activity with the tourists. In a sense, 
if the tourists come into the village, they will be doing a small dance performance, which is performed by the local, the children. And then the, the mothers normally, they do some cooking, small thing, you know, and involve all the tourists also to cook together, of course. Yeah. And then in this case, of course, uh, some uh, young men are involved to show the people around in the uh, villages. So in this activity, of course, they will have fee from us. The village, they have donation as, as well as we try to sell their own local product handicraft to the tourists. So of, in this case, it's very clear. We need the tourists to come to see them. In other side, we always try to educate the people who live there more and more like, for instance, how to keep cleaning your home, keep cleaning your village, how to welcome the, uh, the tourism, to make the people laugh. And others. So in this case, very, very clear that we need the tourists to come back. Even though you mentioned today, the tourist is open, but actually, unfortunately, until the moment, we still have a hassle because Indonesia is still mandatory of the quarantine, yeah, for five days. So it will be not possible for the tourists still not to come because five days is long enough. So if you suppose the tourists coming for two weeks, they've already have a quarantine for five days, so that always. So that's why at the moment, well, it's a hope that will be changed. Again, the policy of quarantine. As soon as it's no quarantine mandatory anymore, anymore then the tourists will come. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that's really important. Quarantine needs to change, quarantine rules need to change. But I saw something very interesting when working with West Java during COVID. You were all proactive. You especially would always attend every session, every meeting, instead of resting and saying, okay, you know, I know everything about tourism. I've been in tourism for 34 years. You actually did a lot. You reinvented the entire way that Bara Tours approach will be in a post-COVID world. Please share your own how you changed Baratwa's mindset, planning with your teams during COVID. What were the new itineraries you planned? How did you um, come, kind of change the whole way that you reworked in terms of routes, tours, approach, who you will involve? What is the level of comfort you will give the tourists? How are you going to be protective towards them? How are you going to create better experiences for them? At the same time, how will you better the local populations? Can you please share? Yes, you have told us how you will work with the village. So that part has been, we do understand, but do share how your whole mindset changed during this um, COVID. Well, I, mean, I saw you there regularly working with us, working with Ajay Ji to actually kind of, you know, develop um, it in a beautiful way. Well, okay. Um, how could I explain? Because you see, it's one thing. Uh, of course, I give the understanding to all my employees, my staff, driver, guide as Woody as well. Woody was here now. So what I ask and tell them, we are now in a big problem in the tourism tech. But even though we are in problem, if we are only stay, only watching, nothing to do, it even getting worse. So that's why we have to do something. Um, what I'm doing actually since two years already now, as because I'm very a B2B uh, business company. So what I'm doing now, of course, internally, we give this understanding to the people and we support them. This is the more important. We support them in the case that even though we don't have income, but we give them monthly. This is very important because as, as I mentioned to you, they have been uh, working with us not 
less than 25, 30 years. So in this case, my appreciation, okay. So this is my time to support them. Yeah. I know it was devastating for them also. I know it was really challenging for them also because they were completely emotionally disrupted. Yeah. So you work with building new roots, things that you would have never thought of, how you bought in spa, meditation, wellness, which was natural, which nobody had ever thought of, the rice paddy villages, how yeah. you created these new roots. Uh, yeah. please tell us about how you built the new itineraries. Okay. Your whole team energized with it. That's why this is one of the reasons. Besides, we are doing the normal routes, yeah, like we call it overland or visiting the normal uh, tourism attraction. I have been actually done several times, long time ago, and then I like to re-improve actually. Like for instance, here in my area, we have a very beautiful tea plantation, right? Yes. So, you know, to the plus point of the tea plantation, not only to visit and drink, of course, drink tea itself, we can also make meditation, for instance, for two hours in that place. So because well, in the morning, at six o'clock in the morning until seven or six, eight o'clock, this environment, the atmosphere, the air are so fresh. We really can do anything. Yeah, there's also the hotel which is close by, which is also doing the places for meditation and the hotel itself is look like in the somewhere else. So, so it is, can be combined. And then also the people can go also, for instance, to, to the, you know, as I mentioned to you, to go to the villages and they try to how to cook, they try to be a farmer. This is, yeah. you know what, I, I, I show that they really like it. As long as we manage how to do it. We dressing them up with the farmer clothes and then, you know, well, try to be a real farmer, which is working with buffalo or something, even that. So, but I saw this interesting of the people for this really special group, of course. Special people, special group, which is what I mean. And then, of course, the spa, wellness. Now, spa, it's really one of the need, actually, for the people like to have a spa, wellness, or even cycling. So this kind of thing, which is I introducing more now to my uh, partner. So that's why I'm doing now. I keep in contact them uh, every week with email, give some information, giving some new road, like what I just tell you just now. And then also giving some explanation how to do with all the kind of, uh, uh, the tra not the tracking, how we reach the full canal, because it's very unique here in, in my place. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the volcano here, which is normally if you go like to go up to the top of the volcano to see the rim of the craters, it's normally at least you have to tracking up. Yeah. But here you don't need it because it's, we call it as a drive in craters. You only need to, yes, yeah, drive in crater. We only need to drive to the top. Yeah. And then when you are reaching at the top, you open the door, you are there and you walk down for 15 minutes and you are reached. The, which is, it's really, really, you are in the deep of the active volcano. For instance, if you bring one egg, you put it on, one minute it's boiled. So this is all the unique thing. I really like to show them instead of only just the normal, of course. Yeah, the overall tourism. So this is what I'm doing now to introduce all the things. Thank you. Raj, it really is a drive-in one. So you go bashing in a Jeep through the water so you don't damage anything. And then you get straight to the crater and you can actually just dip in. I should have added that in the video. But <laughs> to this, I saw something else. I saw you actually charge and force the rest of the Java tourism to change their mindset. I saw you very thoughtfully think about your clients and work in a different level altogether. And mm -hmm. I'm going to share an example with you because um, he's, he's a ge generally a very humble man. So I'm going to share what he did. Um, Yogitara, it's the oldest temples, the oldest Hindu temples in the world. And uh, definitely right. Uh, and what he did was, I, one day we were brainstorming me, Ajaji and him, and we spoke about how Yogitara being the biggest Hindu temples, that I as a Hindu, if I went, to, went there, would like to sit in the villages there because generally when you go to Yogitara or you go to uh, the other temples, there are about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people along with you 
photo opping, photo bombing, everything. Yeah, yeah. I asked him, what can you do that a person can feel safe and can get that solitude? And two days later, he sends me a message. He says, Sonia, are you free? Can we Zoom? I said, yes, we can. He said, you know what I've done? I've gone, I found a place in a beautiful paddy field where their people will benefit from this. The locals will benefit in the paddy field by, by this thing. And the Hindus like you who want to meditate and feel spiritually, we will employ without any added cost this whole experience into the thing so y'all can go and meditate, understand the history of Parvam, not do it in a commercial over-tourism way and still achieve it. The same thing when, when I asked him for the Bali performances. So Bali has the most amazing performances, dance performances every night. But again, there are hundreds and hundreds of tourists. And I, being in Dubai, have realized that the moment tourism will open, people just flood in. So I mentioned it to him and said, listen, if you're going to do it and they're going to have people flooding, people will stop coming because it's over tourism. Yeah. And he turned around and said, you know what? Many years ago, I had done something special. At that time, it was for exclusivity and luxury. But I think I'm going to make it mandatory. He went, he knocked the doors of Bali tourism, and he got special tables made on a side where people could come, have cocktails at the expenses of Java tourism and Bara, Bara tours, and then watch the performances safely. So safety became one of the key features and the key drivers of every itinerary that he built. And what he did was, in the way, he actually started changing governance because suddenly I saw the tourism body's messages to me were also carrying the same messages that we will make sure it's safe, we will do this, we will do this. So I'm going to bring you to the bigger conversation, which is how you have been working with Java Tourism to actually change it. I am seeing a shift in your uh, Java Tourism approach especially as you'll come to us hosting the biggest travel conference in Yogyatara next year. Now, it was also on the last screen. It talks about collective facilitation, talks about safe, sustainable travel, talks about digitizing and Asian travel. I want you to take each point and explain to us when you say, what do you mean by safe, sustainable travel? What do you mean by tapping into ASEAN countries? And let me explain to you what digitization means to, to, um, to Herman Sir. Herman Sir couldn't send an email two years ago. Today, Herman Sir is sitting with us and convincing the entire Java tourism and tourism people and his community of tourists and tourist guides and tour companies to be digitally savvy so that he could actually get them to now start getting their own competitiveness and their own reach. So one by one point, Sir, can you share with us? How do you collective facilitation? Not just yours, because I've seen one of the only tourism bodies that I have worked with, I have worked in 10 countries, so I've worked with about 40, 45 tourism bodies. One of the only tour guide company, though they have competition between themselves, they still work for the good of Java. So I want you to talk about collective, how you all have all come together to collectively revive Java tourism. Thank you. Well. Uh, talking about collective uh, facilitation. This is again that we are in West Java, Danish. So instead of doing competition with each other, like, we are the people who always try to help each other, to yeah. understand each other. So this is the point actually, that's why we are in the board. Yeah, we facilitate even, sorry to say, small help from government or whatever, but we all together try to help each other to build, to build. It's, I can say that most of activity is coming from all of us. So this is need really big understanding instead of only uh, looking for donation from somewhere else, but we are really doing, because as I mentioned again, like you can ask Budi, Budi sometimes as well as uh, they are part of our world, if, if somebody like to come over and asking me, hey man, I like to see West Java, I said, okay, we do not have a budget for it, but we can facilitate you. For instance, five days, four nights to see West Java. Okay, so we work together again. We work with the hotel, we work with the guide, we work again. So it, it's, 
this is facilities, facilities collection. So with this all, with all the support of all of us, and it's done. Yeah. So that is the same. And talking about the uh, environment impact, or, uh, sustainable, sustainable, safe, safe also, safe experience, oh, safe, safe experience, of course. Now it's getting more and more important. So all the travelers should be very safe. That's why we have to really concern since they arrive, what should we do provide for, for the tourists? Even though we have to check, even especially now, it's still in COVID, for instance, until last next year. So you can ask Budi. Budi just have uh, guided my, my group, the local group to uh, uh, Romo and others. We do nearly every two days, all the crew has to be antigen. Yeah, <laughs> that's one thing. And we check all the insurance, all the, the travelers should be have insurance. Otherwise, we will pay for insurance in two days. And all the fire vehicles and all this safety of the procedure of uh, even for lunch, dinner. So I let Budi check in the beginning before the guests coming. Yeah. While for sustainable, you know, since long time ago, what we are talking about sustainable, but to my to my understanding, no, we are no longer. We still provide all the gas, bring uh, mineral water every day, but we don't do the plastic anymore. What we do, we buy them a tumbler, and before they go, they have to fill themselves the water in the hot tub. So there's no longer plastic available for drink water. This is, to me, this is sustainable. One of the improvements. Well, small steps. Um, it will take small steps to build towards big steps. Yes. I've also yeah. seen another shift you've made for sustainable is when you mentioned that you will only work with very, very, uh, with fair tour operators who yeah. put fair. So sustainability yeah. has many angles and one of them is how they behave with their clients and their, their people. Mm -hmm. I see that you are very selective with who you work and make sure that they're sustainable also. Also, I see that you add sustainability into your itineraries when you make people visit villages, you take them to the more marginalized communities. You don't take them for retail trips or, you know, stuff like that. You take them to the artists. You've shown us some of the most brilliant artists and you also create a space for, um, for things like um, uh, um, artist sales, craft sales. I remember seeing a uh, uh, Baltic, Baltic yeah. painting and everything. Yeah, yeah. I've seen sustainability come into your itinerary really quickly. Now, uh, you, digitizing. I remember when I came to Java, none of you guys knew how to be uh, digital. So how are you now digitizing and actually growing digital? Uh, digital? Uh, thank you. Well, yes, it's good. Very good uh, question, actually. You know, uh, to be honest for us, actually, since I'm only doing B2B, yeah. So, uh not really big changing in digitalization because we only offer to our operator to other operator instead of to selling to to the client directly but of course we do some digitalizing digitalizing according to the request for instance my my tour operator in Japan, Herman, we've lost you voice wise again the computer is misbehaving no, no, just when no, we no, decide we to talk about digitization your computer decides to go home, yeah, that's true so that's true that's we're going to have to call <laughs> i'm not we really can't hear you Herman, sir. Yeah. no we can we can i can hear you oh, you can Herman, sir, we can hear you yeah yeah please go go ahead yeah. yeah so that's why and at the moment we are not having a lot of changing in, in our uh, digitalizing it because we are based on B2B. but of course we we improve some digitalizing for what our tour operator partner is asking. For instance, like yesterday from Germany, Herman, you have to follow this uh, kind of IT thing. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know that I take the energy and follow like that. But so far, I didn't do like, uh, you know, it's like others which is doing directly to the client. You know? This is the thing. But of course, in, in the next future, I think it will be more and more to have digitalizing. Yeah, Sonia. So this is really honest. I explained that what I'm doing. 
Well, very well said. But another aspect of digitalization is something that you're doing with a lot of other people, including us, which is now showing a new market. You have decided, along with the other Java tour operators, yeah. show a different side of Java to the world. So you're competing against the over tourism that people have mm -hmm. in Bali, and you mm -hmm. want to send them to the other parts. Please talk about that. Okay, right. Well, very nice. I like to answer this question. Um, as you know, in Indonesia, it's a huge country, a yeah. huge country, very huge country. Uh, this archipel is consisting more than 16,000 islands, more yeah. than 16,000 islands. So since an ages, they know only one island. It's Bali Island. So, yeah. So in this case, that why I am, as the people from Indonesia, I really insist, and I'm, as the, the people, have also to know the other part of Indonesia, which is also offer the nice thing, the beautiful thing, <clears throat> glass and green. Well, they are a good culture, heritage. Well, whatever, like uh, as I, you have seen in my presentation. You, you know, like for instance, if you are talking about uh, batik, now you mentioned that in Yogyakarta, you can learn how to do the batik. Easily, all my group, I always fitting one batik, and then in this thing is not really they have to see or buying the batik. But first, we go to the workshop. So I give them all the clothes like this, the paper, and then the cloth is already there are some pola on it. So the people then trying to make their own batik. It doesn't matter what the result look like, but the main thing, when they bring home, they can show the people, look, I'm doing my own body. This is the thing, what I really want. Not only see, because if you see, you forget, right? But if you do, you understand. Uh, so that's why, that's you bring you all. So that's why, I, that's why I, I, I really like emphasize, so, you know, like we'll, Bromo volcano, the other volcano. This is very interesting to see the sunrise in early morning. Yeah. And we offer them also a uh, horse ride for a few minutes to get that one. Or either you can see the nat natural park. You know, we have actually in West Java, we have one side, UNESCO site. It's a natural park of Ujung Kulon. Side. And also we have Orang Uchan, for instance, rehabilitation in one in South Kalimantan and one in North of Sumatra. This is something else. Well, Komodo now is being uh, sexy. Everybody likes to go there. <laughs> so the Balabuan Bajo. But in Java itself, it's more than enough. You can go, for instance, yeah, well, there is another UNESCO site in, in, in Java, for instance, the biggest Buddhist temple, this is UNESCO site in Borobudur, Borobudur temple. Yeah, it's coming from 9th century. And then also the other side is beautiful Prambanan temple, also UNESCO site. So this thing, thing I cannot say uh, all this thing in this time because it's a really lot. I can speak maybe an hour, an hour, because the main thing is. We have everything. You mentioned it. Even you can have a surfing paradise here if you want. You can have, of course, wellness, spa, trekking. Well, even not like the Nepal, of course, but still very good. So, okay, that's why. Um, before I open it up and the lovely questions come, um, <coughs> I have just one question before I open it up, open the floor. Yes. One is that um, now, as you're all ready to host the big ATF and ITB and stuff like that, you all have suddenly changed your focus. Your focus initially used to be towards Europe. Now you're talking about an ASEAN focus. How and why has this change of focus happened? Okay. Do you believe that inter-regional travel should be more facilitated? 
Thank you. Very good question. You see, uh, since 20 or uh, 30 years, most of my clients coming from Europe, yeah? All right, from Europe. But then I see, I have uh, also to look for the Asian market. Because however, the closest one and the easiest one to get to Indonesia is our neighbor, Singapore, well, uh, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, yes. Uh, well, those two things, yes, this thing, uh, the country is very good, but now Cambodia and Laos. You know why? Thailand is my preference because they related. They have Buddhists. In Jogja, they have a Buddhist temple. So that's really related. So they like to come. Yeah. So the market can be easily done as long as there is the transportation. The problem for us is transportation between Bangkok and Yogyakarta is still do not know. So it has to be fire, fire. Kuala Lumpur. This is the market which is only going to Bandung. They are not going anywhere. They spend three days to net or four days to net only to Bandung. Why? You know why? They like the food. That's number one. They only looking for the food, food, food. And then for the man, they can do. Yeah, he says, I have to be honest. The nightlife is good. Yes. Okay. And this, I mean, here, the nightlife is really a legal. Legal. And the golf course also here. And it's, of course, quite cheaper in compared to While for the wife, and son, they can go shopping. A Bandung is very well known for shopper from Kuala Lumpur. Every day, only going shopping, 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 and then food. So this is the thing. That's why I found it. Now Cambodia and Laos coming in as well because it's related with this. Singaporean, normally they do for meeting because I can see if they calculate to, to do to hold the meeting here, to hold the meeting in Bandung, is much more cheaper than they hold the meeting in Singapore. In Singapore, it's three hundred, five hundred dollars for the hotel, yeah. for the five star. Here, you can still have one hundred dollars for a hotel, and the the plane ticket maybe is only uh, uh, if you are lucky you can dollars. Yeah, maybe one hundred. Yeah, thank you. So what I love about it is that you'll have played on every leg. You'll have played on the money played on the food and culinary experiences you'll have given what the woman loves so there's very well priced shopping i myself am guilty but also what i've seen what you've done for the indian travelers you've suddenly hit the wedding markets you'll have approached, java has approached and said oh we we can also give you big weddings so we just hosted two family weddings in bandung recently because of the wonderful legacy we've seen in bandung um I'm going to wrap this up because there are a lot of questions that I see coming. And one of the first questions I saw was, um, do you go into remote tribal areas or villages like the Mentawi Islands in Sibiru? Where are the other tribal or local villages which, have, which still have that uh, local culture that you, you take uh, people to? So that's the question. And Raj has asked, um, Oh no, Raj has just made a comment and wanted to connect with you. I've given him your email. Yeah. So um, uh, there was a question by Aditi, but I think you start with uh, Maureen and I'll go back to Aditi's question. Um, she okay, wants to know the tribal villages or tribal yeah. areas that you go to. Like I mentioned Kampung, I mentioned yeah. the other Kampungs that you go to, but talk about Kampung. How is it? What are the villages? How many families are there? You will explain it better. Yeah, thank you, Maureen. Uh, this is my favorite, actually. Going to the villages because you will meet the real people, belong to the local. Uh, in West Java, especially, we have offered, and if I don't wrong, yeah, if I'm not wrong, uh, more than seven really, really uh, uh, traditional villages. In the east part of West Java, and then until the close by to the to the middle of it. So I mentioned to you the really remote one. 
we have to arrange for you to go to Badui village. This is really remote. It is only has 40 roof in their family. That's all. So we really, and this is you, but you know, it is really good. You walk for three hours and only along the rice field, along the villages, and then you will meet the people. The people here is so different. They are close to the city, but they don't want to follow all the things. They don't have light. They don't want to, uh, uh, you know, every morning they are going to the river. Even, for instance, if we give them the bathroom, they didn't use. You know, for them, it's more ritual. Not only having a bath, but the ritual to do. Why the people should have bath, for instance. There's some meaning on it. Yeah. The way they are eating, the way they are talking, the way they are walking even. The people never walk like this. They're always walking like this. <laughs> this is something. Yeah, that's one right, very remote. And the other is nicer, is the one in Kampung Naga. Kampung Naga is just easy to reach. It's only drive from Bandung to ours, and you reach the village. You walk down, you, we already make stairs down up there, but still they also have 38 roofs. Naga. We, you will still see very, very much traditional. The way they are cooking, the way they are praying, the way they are talking. One thing they always said, when you come to see me, let them just whatever they do. Yeah. Then we really can see what the normal life every day. Very interesting. They also do not use the uh, uh, detergent. They don't have any radio. They don't have any television. Even they're very close to the city. It's only maybe 30 kilometers. So this is the thing. So that's the local country. For remote, yes. Like for instance, the Kalimantan. We are going to remote area for the orangutan. It is going to remote area. And then also for orangutan in north of Sumatra. Also, we are going to the remote area. Mentawai, well, 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 we have some client to go there as well. And but Mentawai is, I think, is for me, is more for the well to see the people. Yeah, the Mentawai people, it, it is something also different. Yeah, but they do. I think. So that's my reply. Thank you. Hopefully, it's fulfill your question. I think it did, and she mentioned. Uh, yes, and she said you've sold her. She's completely sold on it. So uh, Ajay Ji and uh, anybody else, do you have any other questions since you're unmuted? Um, Nitin, would you like to brainstorm and say what's different, what's what's unique for you, what you feel that they can put on? Because this is sharing. Um, <clears throat> so I would love to hear. And uh, Sunal, yes. I would love you to once visit um, Java and West Java and see what they do and how they develop the, the woman culture. And I would love to find a synergy between you and Java tourism. So Sonali, do get in touch. I will connect you. Um, yeah, um, you like Armin, hi. Okay, can it I? Looks like Mina also has a question. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Mina, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. I hi. just want to, uh, you know, uh, Harman, think that, uh, it's not a question, it's just a reflection that uh, I think the COVID has allowed us and especially businesses like yours to, to like rethink, uh, you know, and look at address those issues which are in the realm of uh, uh, expansion, like how you have now expanded your um, idea of tourism to deal with the realities which have otherwise never happened because we are so busy uh, riding the plane, sorry, flying the plane, that we never sit back to see that how we need to re-engineer um, needs of people. So I think that is the beauty of what your conversation tells me. And the other fact is, I think an evolved tourist today, or an evolved traveler really is the word, is also looking for immersive experiences. I think the COVID has kind of touched a chord in all of us that there is something more <clears throat> above to just having plain fun and integrating some of our values, some of, of some of some other things that we really need to uh, 
what should I say? What's the right word that f- aligns with our values? And I think that for me, I would love to do that. Like yesterday when I was at that session with Sonia, though I had to jump out on the donor travel piece. I think for me, that is so gratifying. And I find some reflections of that, even with the way you have, you are trying to attract travelers uh, to your destination. So that's all I want to say that I think I'm sold. And if <laughs> there are so many others, uh, you know, who are feeling this. So congratulations and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So Ajay ji. Uh, okay. Hi, Harman. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, so, you know, uh, uh, just for, uh, you know, I'm sure this will be a question uh, with many of us, because the Indonesia that we, uh, you know, normally think of is Bali and, uh, you know, the adjoining places like Ubud and Semanaike. So now, how do you integrate Java, which is your region, uh, a lot uh, with the rest, with, with the more popular destinations? Suppose, you know, an Indian is going, obviously, he would like to go and party in Ubud. Mm-hmm. But then if he, you know, if he wants to explore further, we have to send him to Ubud. So uh, one, what is the best way of reaching Indonesia? And second, how do you integrate the most popular destinations with uh, Java and Bandung and other places that you recommend? So that is important because then you can sell the trips Thank you. and people will be aware. And then, you, you know, since your region is not uh, as... Uh, you know, uh, people not are not aware of your region as much as the rest. You need to really uh, uh, do digital marketing, be on the social media so that people are aware because this is the way of uh, the way things are done now. I don't like it, but yes, I have to do it. I like face-to-face marketing too. I'm the old guard like you. So uh, <laughs> there are two questions basically. Okay, thank you. Very good question. Of course, uh, uh, regarding the digital, well, we should do. But what I like to explain to you, uh, there is two kind of job. The digital should be done by West Java Promotion Board, West, West Java Tourism. While myself, as a managing director of Bada Tours, we are doing B2B. So it is both of it should be in line. Yeah, all right. So that's correct. But uh, to answer that your question that how to integrate, that is very, very, very nice, you know, for me to explain. Thank you. Thank you for the question. What I really suggest, people come to Indonesia should try, or it should be better traveling from the West and all the way to the East. Okay. But I don't know, maybe uh, if you have, Give me a little bit. How many days normally the Indian will be having a vacation? But for instance, uh, about ten days. Weeks. About ten days or two weeks. Ah, so. ten days. That is actually perfect. You can combine mm-hmm. between Java and Bali. Yeah. So your arrival, it depends. You can arrive in Jakarta, for instance, because all the planes going to Jakarta, and then. From Jakarta, I fully suggest to take a train to Bandung, which is which is a, a really right along the beautiful scenery. It's something something very beautiful as well. So stay in Bandung for tonight, which is we can cover like what I have uh, uh, shown you and the presentation. One going to the north, one going to the south. So at least it coverage the full canoe, meditation if they want, in the tape plantation, hot spring, people visiting village, because it's all the line, it's on the line. Yeah. Sir, can, I then, can I interrupt? I can I interrupt yeah. for a second? Yes, what I'm finding is that people don't stay anymore for two days. They want to stay for four days. They oh, want yes. to spend yeah. more time. Uh, even in a place like Dubai, where people used to say two days, uh, two, three nights, two days, three nights, two days. Yeah. Everything can be done. And Dubai is a small place. Today, we're seeing longer vacations. 
They want cheaper accommodation, but they are happy to pay longer vacations. So I think that game has changed. Uh, Minal is very right. People have become slow travelers. People don't want to go through 10 tests uh, and, and then only stay for two, three days. So I think we're going to have to think of longer itineraries. And I know that Bandung, having been in Bandung, Bandung can be really enjoyed in four days. Mm. Four days really, really makes a difference. And four to five days. So I think the itineraries, my opinion, the itineraries need to increase. It's more important for slow traveling. And I like the fact that you suggested train versus a car. It's easy to get cars. And it's not that it's expensive, but it's not sustainable. So I love your idea of a train from Jakarta to uh, Bang. I'm going to use that mode next time. Yeah. So you see, that the thing that you combine, so Jakarta, Bandung by train. Yeah. For me, if in, it will do not enough to stay for night here in Bandung, because I can show something every day different thing, which is, okay, let's say for night. So you already have nights. And then you still have some other five nights. So you can also combine either to Yogyakarta as a guest to see this, what I just mentioned to you. And, and then from Yogyakarta, then you have to play a plane to Bali for another four nights. So this will be combined. But then they, so it is integrated. And then you will see at least more culture, more people instead of only people in Bali. So what I like always to suggest that please put Bali only in the end of your vacation in Indonesia. Before, please do see something else in other part, which is also very nice. That's my suggestion. Really. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Abel. And then uh, the way that you are trying to, you know, after two years of COVID, the way that we normally secure business, you know, be it B2B or B2C, this yeah. has also gone into a dramatic change. I've seen most of the home stays and village stays uh, trying to be on, on the social media and convincing people to book directly. Yeah. Uh, many of our foreign agents have closed down, you know, because of COVID or they have got reduced to 50% of the staff. So, uh, you know, in a way that, you know, uh, I fear that when we restart, which is uh, going to happen very soon now, we have, we were going to reinvent how to market and how to procure more clients. It's like uh, starting all over again. So what's your plan regarding that? Ajay, brilliant question. May I interrupt? Because I don't think, um, I don't, Herman sir will realize, but an answer, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you one tip. It can't happen in, uh, in, 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 over there. We are the land of England. We speak English better than anybody else, but their language is the Bhasha. Very few travelers, except Malaysians, who like the pampering of a trip advisor, will actually be able to travel independently in Java or in, in Indonesia. So um, th there is a problem with that. People over there would tend to go with the tour operator versus trying to go alone. Plus, access to places like Kampung Naga are not, it's not open. In India, we can openly go to say a district or a raigar or a village or a small village, but for Indonesia, sure. it's not a possibility. And this answers Nitin's question. Nitin Kampung Naga does not invite people to stay because they're very small. I know with a lot of facilitation, Herman sir managed to get even get us to, to kind of stay there or spend time there. And mm -hmm. but Nitin has brought up a very important question about the stays. He is asking about how much and what are the quality of accommodation that you have in uh, in uh, in uh, and in Kampung Naga. Uh, may I interrupt here? Sorry. Um, <clears throat> well, what I mean about the stays there, um, Harman sir. Hello. Um, yeah, hello. Yes, I hello. Have, I have led tours in um, Kalimantan area, especially in Borneo. Yeah. and stayed with the Iban culture people yeah. in the long houses. I've, I've yeah. led tours in Ethiopia with the tribes, especially yeah. in the southern part of Ethiopia. I've led tours in Papua New Guinea. And Papua New Guinea is like kind of my baby. That's my passion there. I go there a lot. And I love to go to Irinjaya one day as well. I haven't been there yet, but that's in my bucket list. But especially now you mentioned about these two particular beautiful tribes. And um, as uh, Tony, you also mentioned some of the tribes were cannibals before there as well. 
So um, in some of the tours, what I I personally my interest was, and I can be my travelers, and I usually change uh, my itinerary sometime. In Borneo, what I did is I totally changed my itinerary, and instead of staying in a hotel, instead of just going to see this Iban long house and spend only maybe half an hour or forty minutes or one mm-hmm. hour there, and go back to mm-hmm. again to the hotel somewhere, I actually changed whole plan, and we stayed. at the long house we didn't have any accommodation because that long house has 49 families living and all these 49 families are just one mm-hmm. one or two two rooms in that long house yeah. so what we did it whole my group and they were senior citizens from north america and we all stayed in just in their out area with a very thin mat and you know first i thought this 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 company i'm working for they're going to sack me because the client's going to complain uncomfortable this that blah 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 and all but that was the highlight that was the more special for my client actually than even visiting orangutan so um so i just want to ask if there is a certain kind of possibilities to stay with the you know with these particular communities with the you know in kampong nagas or badu people okay um can i reply can i answer please please go ahead please okay. okay yes thank you for your question sir yes of course i mean um kampung naga is not as a big village i do as well as i mentioned to you only for tourists there is a possibility for the people who like to stay for one night okay of course uh and then uh but it cannot be too big you know because say they they be they may be for individual yes we can do maybe until 10 people we can still accommodate them in their houses yes but of course we can do also in badui we can also stay there but as i mentioned to you then uh, in in badui there is two different uh communities there inside and outside so we can stay inside uh, we cannot stay inside because it's it's really protected but we can visit inside but we stay in outside badui But in Kampung Naga, we can stay with them as long as not too big. This is a possibility. Otherwise, there is another solution to go to Kampung Naga, which is because you know the problem is in our community, in our uh, local community like that. I don't know. Uh, you really have to explain to them. As for instance, the bathroom. This is very important. Our bathroom is not the <laughs> is not the way. Even the toilet. normally they cannot do because they, our toilet is different thing and then normally they are going to the to the to the river as i mentioned to you so if they really understand this then we can do it otherwise there is another solution there is a uh, for kampung naga is the only 12, 40 minutes then you will have a real hotel as i mentioned to you because this located only 30 kilometers from the big city let's say But as long as they really like to expect and accept that the condition of all this thing because they are really in traditional way in everything so this is the thing i like the suggestion so i think we need Thank to try, i think we need to try what nitinji has said yeah. nitinji comes from experience and says that even the clients he thought who would not stay there might stay there things have changed him and so mm. i think we might just you know let's throw the offer to the winds and let's see what yeah. <laughs> Before we close up, I would like to I would like you to take Ajay Ji's very important question. Ajay Ji, can you rephrase that question, please? Because that was a very very good question. Ajay Ji. Um. Uh, maybe I will not be able to put it together. You know, I uh, I just totally. Yeah. So. Uh, well, Sonia, can you just uh, repeat it? I mean, I uh, just. you know i was thinking of something else you were talking about alternative things during and how india kind of went into alternative mode for tourism and how people would have decided to go directly to uh, versus going to yeah. uh, through operators yeah so how and i wonder if you have the same scenario as in india and a lot of other countries where uh, since the last two years people are relying more on instagram on social media to find out about these lodges home stays village stays mm-hmm. and they're mm-hmm. all there i mean and they prefer to go directly to the client so mm-hmm. uh, that particular segment 
has been mm -hmm. you know the way of booking mm -hmm. the way people uh, go and stay there has drastically changed mm -hmm. and then you know the second b b2b business has also uh, you know need to be reinvented again because a few companies have closed down a few companies have uh, you know already already uh, chucked out at almost 50 percent of the clients so m most probably when we restart now we'll find that all of a sudden that that company that doesn't exist or you know it has been diluted so we need to find new innovative ways to procure business and also consolidate it so uh, mm -hmm. it's a big uh, you know question mark as far, as far as far as our future is concerned in terms of procuring business so uh, are you are there any innovative thoughts that you have right um you are right that most of people like to do directly yeah nowadays they open the the <clears throat> online travel agent whatever facebook ever that's why uh, we are as i mentioned to you i don't do like a separate uh, quotation well, we only like to do the package package okay. right yeah this is the this is the i think the only solution because otherwise if you are offer them technically and it's just technically if you are offered this hotel that you will never get it because then they compare with this with that so we better offer the whole package so i give it to you for instance you are selling to the client i'm not touching your client something like that so this is the only thing today because if you are selling you know, the people can find everything they can do for instance uh in the car they open budget whatever they do then the hotel but they forgot one thing they don't know how the guide look like what the language they need how to contact the guide how they actually make it you know so that's what finally what quality coming this is the most important part. Finally, they don't know. So normally what we like to do, this give the normal four star hotels running, not less than one, you know, because this is really good. And we, you know, as a tourist, please be uh, as a guest. Everything is arranged by, you know, the guide is there, the car is there, everything is there. So this is the thing. This is my, my solution, yeah? Because otherwise we, I agree with you, very difficult. Everybody just looking for their self. So I'm gonna give you a good news because I feel it's going to be different. I am seeing people who would not normally even think of um, doing um, uh, a booking on, uh, who would normally think never think of a travel advisor while coming mm -hmm. to a safe place like Dubai. Uh, I think people uh, are also uh, now, while they're booking directly, they might be booking directly with the tour planner or the tour operator. I'm sorry, my video is not working for some reason again, but there is a, there has been a big shift because safety has become so important. When travel comes back, you will see y'all will become the biggest things. Mm -hmm. According to this chief of Expedia, the most important thing in today's travel is called the travel and trip planner. Earlier, people would not be happy to pay even $100 for a TripAdvisor. Today, anybody goes first to a TripAdvisor to design a safe trip. We're not, you'll never have served the hippies. You'll have never served the backpackers. You'll have always served the, the more affordable luxury and luxury segment and mice and global and corporate travel. Those are not booking directly. They're checking your costs directly. So I liked Herman Sir's suggestion better packages at the best prices. And he's right. Try and book from a hotel that he does, like Dan Paragman on your own. You're not going to get that price. You're not going to get that service. The moment you come to Barra Tours, because Barra Tours has been doing substantial business with them, it's a red carpet treatment. They'll pick you up from wherever you are. The food is better. The things are thrown in like this. So the added extras are very, very important. Again, Language is a big problem in places like, even in Chamba, uh, I don't think I can go to Chamba and plan it on my own. Do you see a Harsh or a Natasha plan a Chamba or a, or, a, or a West Java on their own? No, they will first come to you, Ajay, before they go to Herman, sir, because they have trust in you and then you have trust in Herman, sir. So I see inter travel being one of the bigger things. 
They're not going to bypass anyone and go anymore. I'm seeing that even in Dubai, in Singapore, where we are operating. Singapore Tourism once told me, 50% of our travel operators have, have closed shop. What will we do? What will we do? Will we you know what? The 50% are now back. So when I work with Singapore Tourism, I realize that people have now, even for Singapore Tourism, which is probably the easiest tourism like Dubai, they want to go to islands. So they now are employing trip advisors and travel. So I see a big surge versus uh, versus the same. Again, one more point that uh, that Sir brought up. He says, being a good advisor and a planner is very important. Herman, sir, I cannot reiterate how important Buddhi and your role and Hilwan and all your team's role is going to be in planning these new itineraries. Where else will you be able to go and get uh, in the middle of a paddy field, a meditation? You won't even get access to a paddy field. So the rarest places which are not being listed on the system are going to be your key differentiators, which I have Mara to us in the whole last two years. And I tell you, he sat with you and me to actually make this. I have a strict warning from Ashwini to wind up. I'm going to thank everyone from Java Tourism. Most importantly, my favorite smiling man, Herman Rukmanadi. Thanking everyone else for coming.